Jennifer is with an Ohio native who's fulfilling his calling of sharing Jesus' love with individuals in an area just south of the California border. Thank you guys. Well, our In the Community segment actually takes us far out of the community today, all the way to Tijuana, but our guest does have Ohio roots. Gary Russell is with us this week. Gary, thank you so much for being here on Faith and Friends. My pleasure. You are a missionary in Tijuana, but that isn't where your story begins. Let's start from the beginning and just uh, tell us the steps in your life that God used to get your attention. Well, the biggest step was being raised in a Christian home with godly parents that dragged me to church every week. I, I, we went Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and I pretty much hated it. I knew that God loved me. I knew the Bible. I could answer all the Sunday school verses, but I never got the message of discipleship and let other things distract me and never was focused on the Lord. Sports were very important to me, and by the time I was a senior in high school, they were everything and I had dedicated my life really to, the, to football, high school football. And I told the Lord, I will serve you when I'm old like 30. I'm not, I'm doing my own thing now. And that first game my senior year of high school, I had a really good start, scouts and families are watching and my name's in the papers and all this. And then the last play of the half, my, I suffer an acute subdural hematoma, I collapse going off the field end up in the hospital and they tell mom and dad I may not live through the So that's that's at 18, 17, 18 years 17 old? 17 years old. So the doctors came back and said they expected 100% recovery and that never happened and still hasn't. When I woke up from surgery, I was totally blind mm -hmm. and I was that way for two weeks. Two weeks after my parents' pastor came and prayed for me and the next day I could see. Wow. It was double vision at first and very narrow. I have about 10% visual field and I don't recognize faces, I don't drive, and I'm pretty poor with directions. But God did not stop you at that point. That was really a starting point. It was. I knew that the Lord had saved me. I mean, that was like the third time he had saved me <laughs> and spared my life. And so I knew that there was something out there. In fact, I woke up saying, God has a plan for my life. But again, it's that discipleship message that didn't really happen. So I go through the rest of high school, and I'm still not focused on Jesus. That didn't happen until I went away to college. I went to Bowling Green State University. I'm blind. My parents are like, I'm not sure. How's this going to go? And the Lord works it out to where I can live with a cousin who is a Christian, and he wants to go to the Christian organizations. And I think, well, that'll be cool because there's probably a lot of young ladies there. <laughs> and instead of uh, young ladies, I met Jesus that <laughs> first year. And I started reading my Bible and hanging out with people who were unashamed of the gospel and telling people about him. And I knew that if I, need, if I was going to live with those guys, then I needed to change my behavior. But it happened from the inside out through my reading of the Bible. I imagine we have parents at home who are watching this who recognize either they were in your position or they have children in their position. We're, they're taking them to church. They're doing all of those things. Um, their kids are enamored in sports. I mean, it's, it's a normal American life right. to get lost into. But yet you go off to Bowling Green State University to get an education and you meet Jesus. And I met Jesus and he blew me away. And prior to that time, every day, I prayed, God, forgive me, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve hell, forgive me. And after that time, after he washed me, I mean, he washed me through his word. I don't have to fear, I, don't, I live in peace and joy, and not every, certainly not peaches and cream every day, but I don't have that fear of him. He loves me, he accepts me. So you grew up in a Christian home. You had the, the incident with football. You had a major car accident too, major right? Major car accident when I was 14 years old. Okay, so that was before the football mm -hmm. accident. A um, lot of things were happening. God was probably working to get your attention. You weren't quite there yet. It wasn't there yet. You get to Bowling Green Street University. Jesus takes over your life and becomes Lord of your life. And then what happens next? Well, what happened next was I did meet a young lady at that Christian group and I married her. And then we went to Bible college and we were in ministry for about seven years, but that never really worked for us. We were, I was always working full time to support my habit of ministry, but I was not able to make adequate income. So after about seven years, we ended up 
leaving the ministry, moving back to Ohio from New England, and basically felt like a failure. I mean, we had went to do something, we had gone to do something, and we didn't succeed. So we came home, I got my master's in clinical pastoral counseling to enable me to support the habit of ministry, and then I got a job with uh, the state of Ohio, helping people with disabilities get jobs, but I was on that job for 10 years. And so there was a, a huge frustration in my life because I feel like, I felt like God had something for me that I wasn't able to tap into. Mm. And so I lived with this constant tension. Is there more? Is there, am I forgotten? You know, Moses on the backside of the desert for 40 years before he went back to Egypt. Uh, Joseph in prison, though my suffering was certainly not like theirs. There was a tension there. Well, we're going to find out more what Gary was going through and how God continued to lead him and where he is now and how God is using him now. I sense that some of you at home probably are in that very same situation where you realize you know God has something for you, but you cannot figure out how to get there and you don't even really, really know what it is. Well, don't go away. We are going to hear more from Gary 